Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the first part of uh, chap of the third topic. Um, in this uh, video, we're going to um, discuss the enthalpy of uh, chemical reactions. And in part two, we're going to talk about the standard enthalpy of formation. Well, first thing is, what is enthalpy? In the previous videos, we talked about heat and work. Okay, heat is associated with uh, thermal energy, one of uh, uh, one of the types of um, kinetic energy, and we also talked about work, one of the you know um, potential energy. Now, what is enthalpy? Enthalpy is a parameter that is specifically used in thermodynamics. Okay, so um, how do we define enthalpy? Well, we first thing is we use capital H to represent enthalpy, and uh, the definition of uh, the enthalpy is E plus P V. All right, this is the definition of enthalpy. Now, about the enthalpy change, that's going to be delta H. Delta means change. That equals to the energy change and the P times delta V. Remember, when we talk about uh, the enthalpy change, we assume that pressure remains at the same. It's like we are doing a chemical reaction uh, in at one atmospheric pressure. Okay? Um, we assume that um, in general, we don't need to consider the pressure change uh, when we talk about the enthalpy change. Okay? But the delta V volume change is gonna associate it with the enthalpy change. Okay. All right. Now, this is the uh, enthalpy change in general. If you are talking about the enthalpy change in the chemical reaction, that will be delta H reaction equals to delta E reaction plus P times delta V. All right, and we know that for delta E reaction, although most of the chemical reactions we can ignore the volume change, but we still need to consider if we are considering this delta E reaction in general, we still need to include the uh, the volume change. In other words, we need to include both heat and work. All right, so that means delta H R reaction, uh, delta H reaction equals to Q plus W plus P delta V okay so we do need to consider we do need to consider both Q and W when we consider delta E reaction in general now if you remember how we define W okay W is defined W is defined as negative P delta V all right, so I'll plug negative P delta V in this equation. So that will give me delta H reaction equals to Q plus negative P delta V plus P delta V. And you can see that these two items, they can cancel each other out. Therefore, for the delta H reaction, that is the heat energy. Of a reaction. All right, so this is the um, um, the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction. All right, now let's take a look at those two examples. Okay, in this picture, you have an ice pack on your hand. Okay, um, sometimes we use the ice pack to deal with the um, you know uh, the sports injury. But anyway, so when you put an ice pack on your hand, you feel it's getting cold, right? If you consider the ice pack as a system, okay, it's ice, it has a lower temperature than the air around the ice pack and uh, your arms or hands, okay? So that means that the ice pack itself will absorb energy, okay? Will absorb energy from its surroundings, okay? And when you have energy absorbing process, then we call it endothermic. 
Okay. In this case, we say that the delta h would be high, would be greater than zero. Remember when we say that the delta h is the heat energy of a reaction system, right? The ice pack absorbs the energy from its surroundings, so the energy of the ice pack itself will increase. Therefore, delta H would be positive, right? Good. Now, the picture on your right side, it's the burning of natural gas. Well, if you treat the natural gas, this flame, as a reaction system, it's this burning of the natural gas, it's going to release the energy. In other words, the energy will be the heat energy will be transferred from the flame to its surroundings. So flame itself will lose the energy. Okay? The energy or the heat energy is transferred from flame to its surroundings. Therefore, delta H reaction would be negative because it's losing energy, okay? All right, and we call this kind of process as exothermic. Exo means release, okay? Indo means absorbs, okay? So um, these are the two uh, different situations, okay? Uh, delta H positive, delta H negative. All right, now let's take a look at this um, uh, enthalpy change of a reaction. Um, what mass of natural gas must burn to emit 342.0 kJ uh, of heat? Okay, and this is the delta H reaction associated with by burning one mole of methane gas. Okay, you can see this is one here. When you burn one mole of um, methane gas you will get this much of enthalpy change. And pay attention to the sign here. The sign is negative. That tells you that by burning one more of methane gas, this much of the energy will be released. If you remember what we discussed in the previous slide, when delta H is when delta H reaction is negative, that means it's exothermic. The reaction itself will release the energy. All right. Okay. So, how much of um, what the mass of the natural gas must be burned to emit this one? Well, remember, this much of the energy is associated with one mole of meth methane gas. If you want to emit this much of the energy, you can calculate how much of the mole, um, how, how many mole of the methane gas is associated with this much of energy, right? Okay. So, and uh, if you can find out the mole number for this much of energy, you can convert that to uh, mass. All right? Okay, let's set up the equation and do the calculation. Uh, you have negative 342.0 kilojoule, okay, times, remember, negative 802.3 kilojoule is associated with one mole of methane gas. All right, so we can use this as the unit conversion factor to find out how many mole is associated with this much of energy. It's pretty much like a stoichiometry calculation involving enthalpy change. All right, now after you finish this part, you get the corresponding mole number of methane gas to release this much of the energy. Remember, the question is asking you about the mass, so you have to do one more step to convert the mole number of the methane gas to its mass, all right? And then times for methane gas, formula uh, CH4, formula weight is 16.04 gram per mole. Okay, so it's going to be 16.04 on top. All right, this is how we set up the equation. Well, do the calculation carefully. Remember, you have negative sign here, negative sign here, so the final answer should be a positive number. Okay, now if you do the calculation, the final answer would be 6.8 
0.37 gram. All right, so by burning this much of methane gas, this much of the energy will be released. All right, this is the uh, stoichiometry calculation involving delta H reaction. Now let's take a look at uh, more um, stoichiometry uh, features of delta H reaction. First one, if a chemical equation is multiplied by a factor, delta H reaction is also multiplied by the same factor. What does it mean? Well, this is the propane. If you burn propane in oxygen, well, this much, you burn one more of propane um, in oxygen, um, then this much of the energy will be released. Again, pay attention to the negative sign. Okay? Negative sign means energy will be released, exothermic reaction. Now, if you multiply all of the coefficients, okay, here, 1 here, 5 here, 3, 4, multiply all of the coefficients by a factor of 2 to get a, to get a new equation with coefficients of 2, 10, 6, and 8, then what would you like to do for delta H reaction? Well, you multiply by the same factor. In other words, this one here would be negative 2044.0 kilojoule times 2, so 4088.0 kilojoule will be released by burning 2 mol of propane gas. This is what it means, okay? Um, so this is the um, first uh, first one. Second one, if a chemical equation is reversed, then delta H reaction should change its sign. Well, if you take a look at this um, equation here, this equation is the opposite of this equation. In this equation, you burn propane gas um, with oxygen, and you generate six equivalent of carbon dioxide and eight equivalent of water, right? Now, in this reaction, six equivalent of carbon dioxide and eight equivalent of water, they are on the reactant side. Previously, they are on the product side. And here in this equation, propane and oxygen, they are on the product side. The, and previously, they are on the reactant side. So you just need to flip the, uh, this reaction to get this reaction. Then if we flip the reaction, what, we should, what should we do about delta H reaction? Well, you just need to f change the sign. If this reaction is going to give you a negative 4088.0 kilojoule, then this reaction, this flipped reaction, will give you a positive 4.4088.0 kilojoule. In other words, by burning methane gas, two mole of methane gas, not uh, a propane, uh, propane gas, this much of the energy will be released. If you flip the reaction, you synthesize two mole of propane gas, then this much energy is going to be absorbed. Okay, so that's what we need to do when you flip a chemical reaction. Now, the third one is about the Hess law. Okay, what is the Hess law? Here is the description. The delta H reaction for a stepwise process is the sum of the delta H reaction of the steps. It might be a little bit confusing, but that's okay. Let's use this picture to, de to, sh uh, to discuss. Well, the overall reaction is A plus 2 equivalent of B. It generates 2 equivalent of D. This is the um, overall reaction. And you can break this overall reaction to two steps. The first one is A plus 2 equivalent of B it generates 2 one equivalent of C. The second step is one equivalent of C decomposed to generate two equivalent of D. All right. So this is a stepwise process. Then what what Hess law says here is 
The delta H reaction associated with this overall reaction equals to the sum of the delta H reaction of the two steps. And here it shows you very clearly. This is where you started, okay, um, with A and two equivalent of B. And then the first step is to generate the C. This delta H1 is the energy associated with this step. As you can see, it's going up. All right, so delta H1 would be positive. Okay, it's increasing. Now, the second step, C to E2 equivalent of D, going from here to here, the red arrow. The red arrow is going down. That means the energy is releasing. Is uh, The energy is released by the second step. Therefore, delta H2 would be negative. But for overall reaction, the delta H reaction, okay, for overall reaction, the delta H reaction equals to delta H1 plus delta H2. Can you see that delta H3 is associated with the A plus 2B generate 2D, okay? So you just add these two together. As you can see, that's um, part of the, um, because delta H2 is larger than delta H1. Therefore, you know, this overall effect is this much of the energy will be released. All right. Okay, let's use a specific example to demonstrate how we use Hess law to calculate the um, delta H reaction for an overall reaction. Well, what's the purpose of this uh, Hess law? Well, you know, um, in chemistry, we can always perform um, chemical reaction to identify the heat energy that is associated with this chemical reaction, right? But sometimes it's hard for you to do experiments to measure the enthalpy change, delta H reaction, for a particular reaction. Um, well, in this case, you can do uh, you can break this overall reaction to multiple steps and then measure the delta H reaction for each step, and then you do math, add them together to find out the um, delta H reaction for the overall reaction. Okay, so the Hess law provided an alternative way to identify the delta H reaction for and reaction. All right, let's take a look at this example. So hopefully it will help you understand um, why Hess law is important. Well, here, this is an overall reaction, okay? As I mentioned that, you know, ideally you can do experiments to identify the delta H, e, delta H reaction for this overall reaction. Uh, well, sometimes it could be hard for you to perform such an experiment because this reaction is very fast. Um, it's, you know, all of the products, they are gaseous molecules. So it's hard to measure how much of the mass, how much of the products will be generated to do the stoichiometry calculation to find out the delta H reaction with methane, right? So what should we do? Well, what we can do is we break this overall reaction to three sub-reactions. And we measure the delta H reaction for each one of them. And then we use Hess law to do um, stoichiometry for all three of the sub-reactions to find out how much the delta H reaction for the overall reaction. Okay, So what should we do? Well, the way to do this is you need to reorganize those sub-reactions and add them together to to come up with the overall reaction, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at the first sub-reaction. First sub-reaction, you have carbon and hydrogen on the reactant side and methane gas on the product side. In order to add those three sub-reactions to generate this overall reaction, that means you need to first flip this sub-reaction to make methane gas on the um, on the uh, reactant side, because on the overall reaction, you have methane on the reactant side. Okay, so no matter what you do to re when you reorganize those sub reactions, the um, the overall reaction is going to be your goal. If methane is on the reactant side, then you should reorganize the sub uh, reactions to make methane on the reactant side. Okay, so let's flip the first. I'll label that the first one, second one, and third one. 
okay three subtractions so we flip the first subtractions it will give us CH4 gas e equals to carbon solid and the two equivalent of hydrogen gas well once you according to the discussion we had in the on the previous slide when you flip a reaction then you need to flip the sign of the delta H reaction okay so in other words delta H reaction for this new reaction will be 74.6 kilojoule all right so as you see that once we got here we are a little bit closer to the overall reaction because methane right now is on the reactant side. Now, what should we do next? Well, what we can try is we add this reaction with, you know, the second reaction and see if we can cancel some of the items to get closer to the overall reaction. Okay, so what I need to do is I'll copy the second reaction at the bottom here to Cl2 gas it generates CCL4 gas okay now Delta H reaction associated with this reaction is right here negative 95.7 kilojoule when you add this reaction well as you can see that carbon can be cancelled so you end up with CH4 gas plus 2 equivalent of 2CL2 okay generates 2 hydrogen gas and CCL4 gas okay remember when you add the two sub reactions together well the products will still stay on the product side okay the you know the reactants will stay on the reactant side and products will stay on the product side okay you don't need to f you, you you cannot flip anything here now according to Hess uh, according to Hess law when you add two sub reactions together to generate a new sub reaction then the energy that is associated with this reaction should be the sum of this two all right so the delta H reaction for this one equals to 74.6 kilojoule plus negative 95.7 kilojoule okay I'll write it here so that is a, a negative 21.1 kilojoule all right let's revisit this sub reaction methane on the reactant side well, you got two equivalent of chlorine on the reactant side. Well, um, it's it's not exactly the same, but at least we have chlorine on the reactant side, right? And uh, you here, you have uh, uh, tetrachlorocarbon on the product side. Well, it's on the product side. So as you notice that by merging those two sub reactions, we are getting closer to this uh, um, the overall reaction. Uh, uh, one more time. All right. Now we still have the third reaction to deal with. Remember the third reaction. Um, when you visit, when you check this reaction, it looks like we sh the hydrochloric acid uh, is missing, right? But hydrochloric acid is right here. All right. So if you add this reaction and this reaction here, then you will have hydrochloric acid on the product side. So that may give us our f overall reaction. Uh, however, if you double check, you if you um, if you want to get um, hydrochloric acid on the product side, on the third sub reaction you only have two equivalent of H uh, hydrochloric acid, but in the overall reaction you have four. Therefore, you have to multiply the three coefficients by a factor of two to generate four equivalent of HCl. Okay, so. I'll put the step. Uh, I'll, this is the um, step A, not step B. I'll multiply the coefficient of subreaction number three. Okay, so that's going to be two H two 
and 2Cl2 generates 4HCl. All right, according to the, the rule number one we discussed in the previous slide, when you multiply a factor um, in the chemical reaction, and then you need to multiply the uh, delta H for that reaction by the same factor to identify the delta H reaction of this reaction. Okay. In other words, the delta H reaction associated with this reaction is going to be negative 92.3 kilojoule times 2 that equals to negative 184.6 kilojoule. All right. Now, let's take a look at these two reactions. If you add these two reactions together, then you can you can get 4 Cl2 right here, 1 CH4 right here, one equivalent of CCL4 right here, and four equivalent of HCl right here. And meanwhile, you can cancel the two H2. All right, so you just simply add these two reactions together. It, that's well, That will give you the overall reaction, CH4 gas and four Cl2 gas. It generates, well, remember, hydrogen get canceled. Um, CCl4 gas and 4HCl gas and then when you add those two reactions together then the delta H reaction that is associated with this reaction will be the sum of these two numbers okay so delta H reaction of this overall reaction equals to negative 21.1 Kilojoule plus negative 184.6 kilojoule that equals to negative 205.7 kilojoule. All right, so this example shows us how we use Hess law and the stoichiometry calculation involving delta H reaction, okay, to identify the delta H reaction of an overall reaction. Again, we will do more practice in class.